Hello and welcome to the Science of Art. I'm your host, Mott Tuman, and today we're going to be talking all about solvents. You're probably most familiar with solvents through oil painting. That's probably the most common place that you hear solvents talked about. And oftentimes, when you hear about oil painting, you hear about the hazards associated with it, especially if you're a beginner or you've never done oil painting before. Some of the scary things that people can say about oil painting toxicity can really dissuade a lot of people from using it. So my goal for this episode is to really give you guys the tools and the knowledge in order to feel assured in your oil painting practice and give you the confidence in order to paint without being afraid of any of the potential harmful side effects of it. The first thing that we need to address before I can get into giving you those safety practices is what exactly a solvent is. Now, a solvent has a very broad definition. It is essentially any liquid that can break down other substances. And while in oil painting, this is often associated with toxicity, a solvent in and of itself is not a toxic substance. For instance, in acrylic and watercolor painting, water is used as a solvent because it is able to break down the pigment and the binders in both of them. In fact, when it comes to using water with acrylic paint, there's a very common rule that a lot of people follow because too much water added into acrylic paint can actually break apart the bonds. So lots of people try to use a 30% rule where it's 30% of water to however much acrylic paint that you have in order to keep those bonds from breaking apart. And I'm gonna move some things around here real fast and we're gonna test out just how much water we can add into our acrylic paint before that starts happening. So I got a little bit of acrylic paint right here and I'm just gonna start adding water into it. And we can really see what happens when we try to use water as a solvent for acrylic as opposed to just like a brush cleaner. So I'm adding that water in. I'm going to use my palette knife to start mixing this around. You can see already how this is kind of congealing even with that just little bit of water and it's breaking apart. And those acrylic polymer binds are starting to break apart with that added water. So you're not going to have the right adhesion and this is not gonna hold up well on a panel over time. While water works in terms of breaking down acrylic like a traditional solvent would, we don't wanna use it as a medium for acrylic painting. We wanna make sure that we're using mediums that have that acrylic polymer built into it. So it's distilling the acrylic paint and giving you those nice consistent washes without actually breaking apart the bonds of your polymer. So that is the main reason why we try to stick to using water as a brush cleaner for acrylic paint rather than as a medium. So just like water doesn't work as a solvent for acrylic, it also doesn't work as a solvent for oil paint. This is something that I touched on a little bit in our water soluble oil show. So feel free to go check that out if you want more information. But I'm gonna show you guys really quick what happens when you add water and try to use it as a solvent for oil paint. Now oil is naturally hydrophobic, meaning it wants to repel water. So when you mix oil paint into water, it's not really gonna combine it all and it's just gonna start breaking apart into kind of strange chunky ways where you can see the water is never mixing with the oil paint no matter how much I try to combine them together they're just repelling each other. So we just saw what happens when we add water into an oil paint but now we're gonna try an oil painting solvent with acrylic just to kind of see what happens. So I've got a little bottle of studio solve right here that I'm gonna mix in with this acrylic paint. Oh. And you'll see, as I start to mix these with my palette knife, that the paint actually starts to curdle because the solvent is basically separating out the water content from the actual paint. And that pigment in that binder kind of wants to cling together to create these funky little curdles of paint, kind of like a lava lamp. So this is doing something very similar along the lines of when you add too much water into your acrylic paint or try to work water as a medium for your acrylic paint where it's breaking apart the actual bonds and the film of the paint. So this will never be archival. It's never gonna stick very well to your canvas and it's always just gonna look kind of gross. So getting into the details of oil painting solvents, there's a lot of terminology that you'll hear when you're just starting out with oil painting when it comes to what kind of solvent you should use. Some of the most common types of solvents that you'll hear for oil painting are mineral spirits and turpentine. And oftentimes for both of those, you might hear 
that it is an odorless mineral spirit or it is an odorless turpentine, but what exactly does that mean? So right next to me, I have the Tuscan Pine Studio Sol, which is an odorless solvent that you can use for thinning out your oil paint. The difference between this and non-odorless mineral spirits is that essentially it is distilled to remove some of the compounds in it that produce more smell. So the other thing that makes odorless solvents a little bit safer than other types of solvents is that when they are distilled and some of that potency is removed, the evaporation rate for these is actually lowered. That just means that it's gonna evaporate slower, you have a little bit more working time, and it means that it's going to produce less vapor in the air over time. So now that I've covered some of the differences between non-odorless solvents and odorless solvents, I wanna get into some of the common mistakes that can make these solvents hazardous to use. So one of the most common mistakes I see people making is not using a jar like this that has a sealed lid. This is actually an airtight container. You can use it for your brush cleaner. You can use it for your thinning mediums like the Studio Solve. And whenever you're not using your solvent, it's good to keep the lid on this and keep more vapors from being produced into the air. So you guys can see that the top of this has a rubber seal that's gonna help keep it airtight, help keep any of those vapors from being released into the air. We are not using it. Not to mention, it's also leak proof. So you don't have to worry about the spilling out. The other common mistake that I see, which is really a very hazardous mistake to make, is using solvents in order to clean your hands or wiping your brush on your clothing. So the reason that this is very hazardous is because solvents aren't the same as soaps. Soaps, what they do is they cling to whatever molecules are under your hand and they're gonna wash them away. Solvents actually break down your paint, they break down your pigments and makes them smaller to the point where they are able to absorb into your skin. It's not the same as a soap where it is washing things away, it is absorbing into your skin and it is becoming smaller and that makes it more hazardous. So please make sure if you're in the habit of doing either of these things that you try to wear clothing that isn't going to come in direct contact with your skin, like an apron. An apron is a really helpful thing where you can continue to wipe your solvent or your oils off on your apron without being worried about it coming into contact with your skin. Another really helpful tool to use is gloves. If you are worried about paint getting on your hands, use gloves, remove them properly, and make sure that solvent isn't coming into contact with your skin. So my last tip for you guys is just to make sure that you're treating your solvents with the same level of respect and care as you would with any type of hazardous chemical that you have in your house, like regular household bleach that you might use for cleaning. If you're treating your solvents with the same rules and care that you do for something like bleach, you're going to be perfectly safe. Thank you guys so much for watching The Science of Art. If you have any questions about the solvents that you're using or any scientific questions that you wanna see answered, comment them below and make sure to like and subscribe to see more of The Science of Art.